figure out how we can employ innovative approaches to enrich our schools with the principles of sustainability, which is ultimately going to enhance our health and well-being of our greater communities where all of our schools are. Um, I'm Jesse Jones. I'm at Blackwood High School. I'm Christina Smith at Spring Valley High School. I'm Brooke Krigger. I'm at r &E. I'm Kimberly Norris Jones. I'm also at r &E. So right now we're looking at three sites, but hoping that we can eventually move this forward throughout our district. So one of the major issues that we kind of came with is we are all very passionate about sustainability, but one of the issues we get into is everyone starts thinking of environmental first. And really there's three pillars that we need to look at, environmental, social, and economical. So we want each of our students to feel empowered to create lots of small changes so that together we can make very large changes to actually make a difference, not only in our community, but for all of us. Um, and so with these projects that we are proposing today, we're hoping that we can get our students really excited about sustainability and moving forward because there are some really cool projects going on throughout the district and we're hoping to bring that up to the high school level as well. See, I told you about it, y'all. <laughs> All right, so right now we have a five-step plan. Um, big area audacious goals, we like to say. So step one is just building student awareness of what sustainability is. Having them really understand what it means to be sustainable before we can implement projects because we want them to have a care for sustainability so that our projects can be kept up long term. Um, once we figure out the projects we want to do, we need to construct and implement those and start with our campus projects and certifications and then eventually move to the students taking full ownership over these programs and creating kind of their own spin on it and obviously taking it further into more projects and more research and outreach for our students to do. This year, because we have to give ourselves a limit, um, <laughs> we are trying to get through step three. Uh, we have a plan for building student awareness of sustainability that Christina is going to talk to us about in just a minute. And then we've developed three site programs that we can do for projects. And with your help, we will be able to implement those by May of the school year. Right. So Christina is going to take it away and talk about three weeks. And I'm going to bring you some fun little stuff. So, I know you are all dying to know, what is this lovely trophy here? Well, this is just one of our ideas to get students interested in sustainability, competing and collaborating with each other across the district. So we have planned out a green week, kicking off with Earth Day um, in the spring of 2024, and each day of the week will be themed. Our plan right now is to host this at our three high school sites with future hopes of spreading it to our other schools. Um, but it will kick off with a sustainability scavenger hunt. All of our campuses have unique um, locations that point out the impacts that we have on the community and our environmental, societal, and economic presence, right? So we want the students to be able to travel around campus and do a fun scavenger hunt. We want them to be able to design sustainability superhero mascots and they'll use their creativity um, and involve the science. We want them carrying around their trash for a day <laughs> during the trash audit, we call it trash babies. Um, and we know the more students are seeing their fellow peers get involved with these projects, the more they'll be talking about these terms, these concepts, and the more they will want to engage in our long-term projects and take that ownership. So towards the end of the week, there will be an upcycling competition where they can use um, recycled and trash items from that trash audit to see what they can design and create um, and make new life out of. And that will culminate in a no-waste lunch um, and a focus on composting in the cafeteria and resulting in um, winning this trophy, um, tallying all the results within the high schools over the week, seeing who is the most successful and engaging their students um, will be the winner of the Sustainability Cup. And this is all created with non-recyclable materials. So now it has been upcycled and it's not going to a landfill. Um, and so hopefully that will inspire students to keep making trophies in the future as we keep this competition going. So moving on to our next step is the campus projects. So we are requesting $10,000 um, roughly total for our overall projects, but we're gonna now get into our each individual campuses. All right, so at Richland Northeast, we are looking to reestablish our Shakespeare Pollinator Garden aren't aware we have been under deep construction at our school for the last three years 
Um, the smaller top pitcher is what we used to have for a Shakespeare garden, but they had to um, take it down for construction, and then they rebuilt us these um, nice cement Unique. raised garden beds. <laughs> right. Yeah. So um, our first project is to complete the Shakespeare garden, to fill in the, the beds with plants, to involve our school community. Um, we want to work toward getting uh, the Eco Schools certifications and also look, work toward the Green Ribbon School. Um, we're collaborating, well, like meeting their, our school's theme of rebuilding and making resilient relationships with our community. Um, so having people come in to help us with the plants would be part of it. That's our so, so far at Spring Valley, we've had a few successes with sustainability awareness. Um, we hosted a trash and fashion show. Our environmental assistance organization hosted that for Halloween. The students came in and used recyclable and non-recyclable materials to make new uh, Halloween costumes and run, walked down the, the runway. So that was pretty fun and they were able to raise over $1,200 um, to donate to um, victims of the Maui um, and so that shows students were getting involved in that, they were excited to sell tickets, they were excited to attend, and they were talking about it. Um, so the, the, the awareness is there, and we are hoping to increase it even more with this next project. Um, so kicking off with that green week, um, and moving into being a scientist. So I'm hoping to bring beehives to Spring Valley's campus. Um, I myself have already joined um, the Mid-State Beekeepers Association, and our librarian is actually a certified master beekeeper. Um, and even tomorrow we have a certified beekeeper coming on campus to uh, talk to the students and really get them excited about it. So there's lots of opportunities for mentorships and guest lecturers. Um, and now that we have our greenhouse, as you can see on this picture, we currently have a greenhouse, but due to construction, it's being relocated. And once that is up and running, well, we hope to have the pollinator garden reestablished there, and the bees will have a lovely um, garden to visit right on campus. Um, so there are some other goals listed there that we hope to um, develop in the future, but please help us bring bees to campus. And then at Blackwood, we're focusing on our pollinators and composting. We have a wonderful composter that was donated from ReSoil, but the motor is broken, which means that it is not working. Um, so we are looking for funds to help us get that back up and going so we can start a composting initiative in our cafeterias. Our pollinator garden, we are hoping to get up and running so that the students can do citizen science. My students found the issue when we did the Great Southeast Pollinator Census this year and we had zero flowers on campus and they recognized that that was a big issue. Um, so we are moving forward with lots of certifications. The students are already very excited about it and we are moving forward. Um, because we're going to get this question I already know. One, thank you for helping us bring sustainability to the forefront of our schools. But when we're talking about the need for pollinators, the big thing to remember is we are looking for native perennial plants. Um, perennial plants, they come back year after year. They're going to be more expensive than annual plants that die back. And then you turn into, we need native plants. Well, those are even more expensive. Um, but it's a big thing for your butt, because once you have them, they're there. Um, they are designed to live in the South Carolina heat, um, all of our little areas of drought and lots of rain. So they'll be here, and we are making it sustainable, because then the kids can harvest the seeds. We can send them to different sites over to you know the garden at another school to help get pollinators over there. And so that's a kind of theme of the project. Really cool.